السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد uh, Alan family I welcome you all to uh, this Friday's reflection uh, and just a disclaimer before starting of course this is not uh, in substitution for the Jumrah Khutbah uh, we are to pray the regular Salat al uh, but of course uh, on the day of Friday, uh, which is not short of any blessing, um, it's important for us to really use this time and use this day uh, to reflect over a few really important blessings. The first thing that I wanted to discuss uh, with everyone was that in the time that we are currently in, with a lot of confusion, with a lot of uncertainty, where people have a lot of questions, Typically, when we find ourselves in these circumstances, a lot of times we need something to put our finger towards, something to inevitably say that this was the reason why we are currently going through something. Take, for example, a situation where a particular individual is utilizing their phone where there's a lot of information. And when people try to seek that information from the wrong and incorrect sources, that can often lead to very disturbing and very troublesome conclusions. Let's go over the average example that all of us face on a day-to-day -day basis. A certain message comes across your phone, whether it be on WhatsApp, text message, uh, or on Facebook, and whatever video or whatever information that you came across was something that took you by surprise. And because of the care that you have for those that are close to you, you thought it was out of good intention, it would be beneficial to go ahead and share that. Now, once that information has been shared, it goes on to 50 to 100 people uh, and along the lines, there are certain people who will see that message or see that information uh, and it won't affect them the same way that it affected you. For certain people, it might cause them a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. And the reason why I bring, bring this example up is because in times when there is a lot of confusion, in times where people don't have the answers that they are looking for, it's very easy to share misinformation. And there's a very profound hadith in the Prophet Sallallahu where he talks about sharing information without verifying it. Abu Hurairah who reports a hadith and he says the Prophet Sallallahu said, "Kafab bil mal'i kadiban an yuhaditha ma sami'a." It is sufficient or it is enough to consider someone as a liar or a fabricator if he or she passes on every bit of information that they receive. Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah, a great scholar of the past, expounds upon this hadith and he gives a little bit of an explanation. And he says that in the world that we live in, we are surrounded by either truth or falsehood. All the forms of information that we get, they are in one or the other category. They're either true or they're either false. So if someone spreads all the information that they were ever to receive, naturally within that realm of information, there will be some bits of information that are false and that are incorrect. And so Imam Nawawi says that if someone merely just forwarded all the information they got without verifying and checking, that's enough to consider someone as dishonest and to consider someone as a liar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. And when we look into Surah Al-Hujurat, there's a very profound ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings to our attention what we ought to do if we get information like this. What happens if we get information? What do I need to do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hujurat brings to our attention how we ought to go about news when we receive it. Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu in ja'akum fasiqun bin amin. O you who believe, whenever a sinner comes to you with a report. For this sake of discussion, we'll say, whenever an un, unauthentic source comes to you with information. 
it is upon you to go ahead and verify that source. أن تصيبوا قوما بجهادة Lest that you should put people in ignorance or you should put them in any sort of difficulty. فتصبحوا على ما فعلتم نادمين Inevitably leading you to a regret or to a remorse because of your actions. So let's take that same example that we did just, just a little bit ago. You got information, you forwarded that information. Now all the people that received that information some of them got really panicked. Some of them got really upset. Or some of them were just really disturbed with that information. And all in all, causing all of these different forms of emotion in all of these different people, when the individual right at the beginning could have verified the news and could have made sure it was correct to begin with. So it's really imperative for us, especially in this climate, to look into the different forms of information that we get to not just take everything face value, to not just be in a panic, and to not just constantly be scared uh, to, uh, and not know what's going on. So the first point, dear brothers and sisters, that I wish to discuss with you all is seeking the truth or searching the truth. And this is going to be the first S that we're going to discuss today. Hassan al-Basri, a great scholar of the past, mentioned that a true believer reserves his or her judgment until the matter is fully proven. So it is not fit befitting of a believer to come to any sort of conclusion without having the correct bits of information before. The second point that I wish to go over with you all is the silver lining, is the second S. Finding the silver lining in the different circumstances that we are faced with. When we look into the life of the Prophet Sallallahu we find that in moments of difficulty and despair, he always found a silver lining in the situation that he was going through. Now, this doesn't mean that he didn't feel pain. This doesn't mean that he didn't cry. This doesn't mean that he didn't feel emotion. He felt every single one of those things, but yet he found a silver lining and understood that in adversity was a path leading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in adversity, in difficulty, there was a path back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so even though he felt all of those emotions, he always tied it in. He always concluded that thought. He always concluded that reflection with the silver lining that was at hand. What is the silver lining for us in this situation, you may ask? Well, it depends how we look at it. If we look at all of us that had an opportunity to be able to properly and adequately prepare for this situation that we have at hand by going to different stores, uh, getting all the necessary supplies for our family, stocking up on different food items. When we really take, back, take a second back to reflect over the fact that all of us were able to prepare for something like this because we got the reports, we got the news, and we were able to prepare for it. This is an indication to all of us that we have it within ourselves to truly prepare our lives like this and to live on a day-to-day -day basis like this. What do I mean by that? That if we could prepare for a immediate circumstance like this, what excuse do I then have? What excuse do you have? What excuse do we all have to then not prepare before our time comes? If we are on the topic of health and well-being, then in that same breath, the discussion needs to be made that I have the power within me to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to find those habits that were wrong in my life that I needed to correct. That's the silver lining here, along with the other silver linings that we find as well. So the second point that I wish to share with you all, dear brothers and sisters, is finding the silver lining in the trials that we have. And the last point that I wish to reflect with you all over is the final S for the day, supplication. Making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we look into the life of the Prophet sallam, we find that there is a very beautiful dua that he used to make. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min jahdil bala'i wa darki al-shaqai 
وسوء القضاء وشماته الأعداء. A beautiful du'a of the Prophet ﷺ that we can definitely start incorporating within our daily lives. Beautiful meaning and very, very impactful. With that being said, we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to internalize, reflect, and inculcate uh, over all of these different teachings that uh, we just heard. Uh, and we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, allows us uh, to use these moments of despair, difficulty, and adversity uh, to get as close as we possibly can to Him. Jazakallah uh, khair, barakallah feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa